welcome to Beaufort Mountain Science Center's virtual lesson, including our atmospheric trivia. We're going to have a fun time today. So those of you joining us at home, I want you to keep track of your game points, maybe with a piece of scratch paper. Everything's going to be in increments of 100 points, and we'll be wanting to know what you got at the end. So we're going to start our lesson off with this cool product. This is a rubber mat. And it just has like a flat washer and a hook right here. And I have a table and I have a stool over here. So why don't we put it on the stool over here? All right, now I want you to predict what will happen when I connect it to this rope here and I pull it up. And some of you might be thinking, you know what this is. All right, let's go ahead and pull it up. Ready? And whoo! <laughs> Look at that! It's so much fun! It never gets old. So much fun. So, no stickiness, no magnetism, cool product. We're gonna come back to this at the end. All right, so for our atmosphere category, first we're gonna do layers. Let's go to our other camera. Our first layer is the troposphere. Our second layer is the stratosphere. I wanna know what's our next layer. Now I'm gonna give you some choices here. I want it, and I'm going to give them to you in alphabetical order. Do you think the next layer is the exosphere? Do you think the next layer is the mesosphere or the thermosphere? And feel free to pause anytime throughout the lesson if you need more thinking time. All right, so what is our next layer? If you said the mesosphere, you would be correct. Ding, 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 ding. Give yourself 100 points. Our next layer is the thermosphere. And finally, the outermost layer is the exosphere. And I do want to mention our middle layer here is the meso. And meso is a stem that means middle. So that is our middle layer here. Now, these layers are not to scale. And I just kind of put them on these bricks here. I want to know if we could look at them to scale, there's definitely a layer that's thicker than the others. So I want you to think about that. Do you think, which layer is the thickest? All right, do you think it's the troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, the thermosphere, or the exosphere? Which one is the thickest? All right, so we're gonna reveal that in just a moment. Ms. Connolly, our planetarium specialist, is gonna use our layered earth software to go over that with you next. Okay, so we are seeing Earth right now, and that little blue circle that's off to the side is going to represent the thickness of the troposphere. We didn't want to put it over the whole Earth because then it would be hard to see the difference. Uh, the troposphere goes up to about six miles. That is where our weather happens. Um, keep an eye on that blue dot because we're going to move to our next uh, layer, so make sure you're watching. Ready? All right, so our next layer, not a big difference. That's our stratosphere, which goes from about six to 31 miles. That's where we have our ozone layer. Our next, um, our next layer, pay attention. There we go. Uh, that mesosphere, that middle layer, is about 31 to 52 miles. That's actually the coldest layer. Then let's see, we might finally start to see a difference. The thermosphere is a little bit thicker, it goes from about 52 to 621 miles. It's also our warmest layer. And then finally we have the exosphere, which goes all the way up to about 120,000 miles. There's actually not a clear definition where the exosphere ends and outer space begins. So if you chose the exosphere, give yourself 100 points. Whoop, whoop. All right, guys, that's awesome for layers. We're now going to move to composition. So I have, and composition is a big fancy science word for what is it made up of. So I have this air in a bottle here, and this is representing all the gas molecules in our atmosphere. Okay? So, and notice there's, there's a big primary dun -dun -dun, color represented here. And I want you to tell me which one you think is represented. So what gas is that? So let's look at that on our PowerPoint. All right, so I want to know what you think is the yellow part of our pie chart. So is it carbon dioxide, hydrogen, nitrogen, or oxygen? All right, and you can pause if you need more time. Let's go ahead and reveal that yellow. 
Awesome, if you thought nitrogen, give yourself 100 points. Nitrogen is 78% of our atmosphere. The other components are oxygen at only 20%, even though we need it. Uh, argon, well, a noble gas at 0.9%, and then the other trace gases are 1.1%. I do want to mention that carbon dioxide, CO2, is only 0.04% of our atmosphere, and it's considered a trace gas. So even though it's a very small percent, it does have a great effect on our temperatures as a greenhouse gas. All right, so we're going to look at our next category of pressure. Out of these choices, I want to know, which one has the most pressure? Is it the troposphere or exosphere? We're gonna simplify your answer choices. So which one has the most pressure? Is it the troposphere or the exosphere? All right, for 100 points, if you thought it was the troposphere, you would be correct. Give yourself 100 points, that's awesome. All right, so let's take a look at these. These are, uh, there's a reason why I put them on bricks. If these were like legit bricks and I was holding this, it would be really heavy, right? So if you look, think of it, these like bricks, because you know, gases are invisible. It's hard to think about them even when they're in layers. But are there any bricks? Let me rotate this one around so you can see the satellite. Are there any bricks on top of this one? No, it's outer space. So all of this has no mass pushing down on it. Any of these particles and down are gonna be pressed down by gravity. Everything's pulling toward the center of Earth. So, and this one has the most bricks, oh, I mean layers on top of it. So absolutely, the troposphere has the highest pressure. It also has the most density and it has between 85 and 90 percent of the mass of our atmosphere. And you've probably kind of felt pressure changes before in the troposphere, which is the air you're breathing right now. Um, so right now on your skin, you're feeling an average PSI, pounds per square inch, and it's 15. So if you take a little estimate of an inch and make a little square of it, you have 15 pounds pushing on every square inch of you. Or if you want to be like, actually, <laughs> it's 14.7 <laughs> pounds per square inch in PSI. So, um, but we don't feel that because we have pressure on the inside of our body pressing out and we are in equilibrium. However, have you ever gone up in an airplane or driven on a mountain and your ears popped or you wanted them to pop because you could feel the pressure in your head? Maybe you had to like yank your jaw or like yawn to like make your ears pop because you had to release pressure because the higher you go up in the elevation on that land or altitude in the air, um, the pressure decreases in all of our layers, even in the troposphere. Now you've also probably felt it with more pressure as well. And think about that with the ocean. So ocean is sea level and below. So anything down here not only has water pressure on it from above it, but also the air pressure pushing down on the water. And if you've ever dove into water too fast or something and it hurt your ears, that's because the pressure is too great. And divers have to have special training to be able to deal with the pressure changes. All right, so that's our first part of pressure. Let's go look at a really cool activity. All right, so I have a setup here. And let's see, I'm gonna put up a thing of ice. And I'm gonna kinda tell you how to do this. Um, it's really fun. I'm going to put on my goggles here, and I'm going to kind of go over my materials. This is something you want to do with parent permission and teacher permission. So I have two cans here, and they have um, three pipette fulls of water, and if I had to estimate, that's probably like a tablespoon or two, maybe two, um, in the bottom of that. And then I put the burner on high, and that's been going for about 10 minutes. And I also need some kind of tongs. Now here at the Science Center, I like to use the rubber tip tongs because they have more friction here. But any kind of tongs that you can open wide enough to go around the base of the can. And you're gonna go around it, fingers up, so that when you grab the bottom third and dip it over really fast, it's a natural movement for your wrist. All right, so let's take a model of what we're looking at. I love developing scientific models and diagrams to help us explain what's going on. So in the beginning, we have air and liquid water. And then we put on the burner. We're gonna have to reach our boiling point and we have evaporation. That liquid is now becoming water vapor gas. 
which is warmer. It's spreading out, filling out that space, but also it's warm, so it's rising and escaping. All right, so are you guys ready to see what's going on? I want you to keep your ears and your eyes open. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, yes. That was an awesome can crush. And there was even enough pressure change that water went up into the can too. All right, so let's look at the rest of our model here. So when we put the can in the ice water, any of that water vapor left in the can is now going to condense and become a liquid. And it's gonna mainly form on the inside of that cup. This is similar to if you ever had ice water or sweet tea on a hot day and you had sweat on the outside of your cup, that's condensation on the outside. So in this case, we formed condensation on the inside of our can. And then when it got cold, condensation, that's not filling as much space. So we created a low pressure system. Now, because that's low, the room is now considered high pressure. Nature does not like things out of balance. So to create equilibrium, it's gonna go from high too low, and we're gonna get an implosion. You guys wanna see another implosion? All right, here we go. We're gonna do our second count. And three, two, one. Oh, yes. They had a lot, it was almost all full of water that time. That is so cool. So, we just crushed a can with the atmosphere. How fun is that? All right, so, I'm gonna turn my burner off and take my goggles off. So. That is our pressure, gonna come over here. And I have another verbal question for you. I wanna know what is the air pressure you are feeling on your skin on average right now? Let's see who can remember. Give you some thinking time. And then we're gonna reveal the answer. All right, five, four, three, two, one. All right, if you said 15, or even better, 14.7 pounds per square inch PSI. Give yourself 100 points, awesome job. All right, so we're gonna come back to our, our mat here, okay? And I have the table here, so remember, it's really flat on the bottom, has this flat washer here, and the table's pretty flat. What do you think is gonna happen if I put it on the table and like yank up on the hook? Let's find out. Uh. <laughs> Oh, the table's pretty heavy. Um, I also have these. This is a similar product, um, and it's going to do something similar here. Let's put that on there. Oh, <laughs> look at that. I can do some weightlifting today. All right, so I want to know, what is the phenomenon to explain why that mat is not coming up? I'm going to give you three answer choices. Do you think it's gravity, air pressure, or temperature? You can give your teacher, if you're doing this in the classroom, a one, two, or three as you vote. So do you think it's gravity, air pressure, or temperature? What do you guys think? All right, let me, let me show you why it's not gravity. If I have it in my hand, gravity is exerting a force on this, pulling it down toward the center of Earth. However, the force in my hand is up enough, and when I pull it up, it doesn't pull my hand with it, right? So we know that's not, it's not gravity. So it has to be air pressure. So take a look at this. When this is flat against the flat table, what did I remove from this situation? There is no air on the underside. So what is pushing up is the table. What is pushing down on the surface of this red square is air pressure. <laughs> it's not going anywhere. So remember 15 PSI pounds per square inch? Square inch, square inch, square inch. So we calculated this. This is 110 square inches times 15. That's 1,653.75 pounds of force pushing down on the surface area of this square. So, so give me a total for your points, please. Hopefully, even if you didn't get a lot of points, you learned a lot, you had fun with our lesson today. Thank you for joining our atmospheric trivia. We covered our layers, our composition, and pressure. Uh, we hope to see you again, but thank you for joining our virtual lesson on atmospheric layers. Bye, everybody.